the old saying, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. When I saw the specs that Prism promised with their monitors, that was the exact thing that was running through my mind with the F270i Pro, this little monitor in the back right here. Now the F270i Pro is a $470 monitor that has a 165 hertz IPS FreeSync panel with supposedly one milliseconds response time. Oh, and it's 1440p, yes, 2560 by 1440 in resolution. Now to put it into perspective, a monitor that has those kind of specs from BenQ, for example, will cost at least two to three hundred to four hundred dollars more. So how the hell is it so cheap? Just where did they cut the corners? Did they go off the proverbial track limits and cheat their way to such a competitive price with misleading marketing? Well, a little bit. Oh, did they cut the corner to just the right amount? Well, this video is going to be all about that. I'm not going to tell you all of it in the intro. That will be spoilers and stupid. Oh, and I spent $300 on this video, not including the cost of the monitor in buying this color limiter to accurately determine whether this color, the color that this monitor produces is pro, like the name F270i Pro, and whether you can actually use it for pro color grading work pro photo editing work and pro graphic design work. And the results are actually very interesting on that one. So make sure you watch the whole video. And if you do like it, make sure you like and subscribe. You know the YouTube drill. Let's get on with it. Now, before I start, if you have any questions you wanna ask, Discord and Instagram linked in the description below or the comments, I reply to everything pretty much everywhere. And very important, if you don't want to get scammed, I'm not saying that they are scamming anyone intentionally or, or, or anything. I explained a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot of the stuff that I found misleading in the marketing information towards the end of the video. So even if you don't watch the whole video, which I recommend you do because I spent hours and hours and hours putting it together, it's a very in-depth review of the F270i Pro. At least watch the last six to seven minutes because that's where I talk about some of the misgivings of the way they've marketed and the way they presented the F270i Pro as a product, especially in their advertising terms. So I bought my monitor off of Lazada during the 11.11 sale. It came pretty quickly, it took only a few days to reach it, though it was covered in a pretty nasty layer of dust. But I'm sure that's the courier's fault. In this case, it was Ninja Van, if I'm not wrong. The box is sparse and simple, and so is the unboxing experience. There isn't much protective material to really go around, and neither is there many accessories. You get the monitor itself, a sparse metal stand, we'll talk more about that later, and the power cable, of course, and a display port cable. Now, I find the display port cable quite a standout thing to include in the box because display port is the port that you need to be using if you want to really fully get all the features of this monitor. I'm not sure about the HDMI interface on this monitor, but if I'm not wrong, it's 1.4. So if you really want to get it free sync from AMD, 165 hertz, fast response times, basically, if you want to get the best experience, use the display port connector, the cable that is that comes in a box and plug in your monitor through DisplayPort. Trust me, you won't regret it. And it's nice that they included it so you don't have to buy one because DisplayPort cables are a bit hard to find and also a bit pricey, so it's nice. Now the stand, it's not bad, but it really isn't good either. It's nothing to write home about. It's a pretty solid feeling metal one and with the monitor on it, it remains pretty steady and solid. It doesn't feel like it's gonna tip over and unless you punch your screen like a Tyler one. I don't expect that to be too much of a concern. But a problem for me is that it's not a very ergonomic. There's just the lack of ergonomic adjustment with it. It does tilt a few degrees up and down, but it doesn't swivel and most importantly, it doesn't have height adjust. Now, everyone is working from home nowadays, studying from home. We're all doing things remotely through Zoom from home, even if vaccines are starting to become more and more common, it's still a very wireless remote work from home world right now. And we will likely still be sitting in front of our monitors for extremely unhealthy periods of time because our work from home sessions are interlaced with gaming sessions and watching Netflix sessions and all that stuff. So it's important that we have that whole ergonomic experience and ergonomic setup that reduces the strain and impact of sitting there for hours and hours is frankly very crucial to help. Sure, Prism do sell a cheap $60 table mounted stand or you can use any standard VESA mount monitor arm 
because it does have VESA mount screws on the back, as you can see. Uh, and that prism stand does have very good reviews, but it's another thing you have to buy. And frankly, not a fan of just spending even more money. This is a budget oriented product and I expect people who buy this monitor to only have that amount of money to spend on the monitor part of their setup. And also those monitor arms generally have to be screwed in or clamped in tight to the table. And me being the person with the biggest fear of commitment on earth can't stand that. So it is what it is, I guess. At the end of the day, it is a really cheap product. So I guess I'll just let it pass, kind of. I'll just use books or like a random thing to prop up the monitor if I didn't have the money to buy a stand. Okay, now onto the monitor itself. Now it looks clean and simple, like something that could work in both a pro office and a gamer setup. Hell yeah, gamer moment, gamer, 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 gamer. It's got nice stylized angles, but it's still got a clean, simple logo. It's a good balance between aggressive and polite and serious looking. So it could work well in both an office and a workplace and in someone who has a gaming setup full of RGB and has never talked to a girl in their life. It could work in both. Uh, the build quality though leaves much to be desired. The panels creak a bunch. The panel gaps are kind of funky in some places. It's held together with screws. It, tacky looking screws and it's it's made of this very tacky plastic that, that it's just not really nice to touch and hold like when i pulled it off my box my first impression was like oh so that's that's one of the places they cut costs it's light and it feels very cheap it's a part of the monitor you won't be touching much and you won't be interacting with much so it, it makes sense that they cheaped out on it it's not the most important thing on a screen features wise though this is where they didn't cut costs this screen is jam-packed with them they really didn't cut any corners here they definitely went long range round the outside. 165 hertz, IPS, free sync, and by extension, basic G-Sync support, and supposedly extremely good sRGB and Adobe RGB color performance. That is not true. I'll talk more about that later when I talk about my color measurements with this thing. This thing is packed full to the brim with a ton of attention-grabbing features. Oh, and the color accuracy. Okay, so now let's talk about the refresh rate and response time of this monitor. Those are some very important specs because this is a gaming monitor first and foremost, and those specs really impact your gaming experience. Fun fact, while refresh rate is hard, is very important, it's actually hardly everything. I think such as response time, and not only that, different kinds of response time matter a lot too. Like GTG response time and MPRT response time are the two most common ways of denoting the response time of a monitor. But both of these th two things actually mean very different things. Uh, to put it, in like a short summary term, MPRT response time is kind of the thing that tells you how much ghosting that is. And it's a good indicator of whether this monitor will have a lot of ghosting effects and be a smeary mess or not. But let's delve into a bit more detail and let me just teach you about what GTG and MPRT response time actually means so that you know you got that information in your head and next time you're buying a monitor you won't get tricked. So the difference in these two is that one's a bit older way of kind of denoting response time of a monitor and one's a bit newer. So GTG response time actually means grey to grey response time. It means how long it takes for a pixel on a screen to receive the signal and start changing colours. So basically how long it takes to react. MPRT response time which stands for, I've got it down here, let me read this. Moving picture response time actually tells you how long it takes for a pixel to, to completely respond to a signal. So if a signal is, say, for this pixel to turn from white to black, MPRT will tell you how long it takes to completely transition from a white pixel to a black pixel. Mind you, this is response time in relation to whether there's ghosting and kind of smearing on your screen. This actually doesn't tell you anything about input lag because this number can be manipulated with certain things, certain bits of trickery. Uh, in short though, MPRT is a bit more important in indicating whether it's going to be a snappy, crystal clear viewing experience, whether there'll be ghosting or smearing. And what ghosting and smearing is, isn't something from the horror movies, by the way. Ghosting and smearing just means that your pixels aren't changing color fast enough, so it looks like there is a ghost trailing behind things that are moving on screen, which is it's kind of like, which kind of looks like motion blur and as a result is a bit dizzying and does defeat the purpose of a high refresh rate monitor because it, it reduces clarity by adding blurriness and adding uh, effects that nobody wants and doesn't look good at all. But once again, it doesn't actually mean one milliseconds response time has one millisecond input lag. That's actually completely false because it is MPRT response time uh, and this is an IPS panel because this is an IPS panel, it's an F270i Pro. 
that one millisecond's response time that they advertise on their marketing actually uh, a bit skewed with a bit of a bit of trickery. So how do they achieve this one millisecond MPRT response time on an IPS monitor? Well, the answer is some fancy backlight strobing tricks. What they basically do is they strobe the backlight so that the pixels actually change faster. So there's actually less ghosting and less smearing effect. In practice, this gives you pretty much the same result in terms of minimizing ghosting as having a one millisecond response time panel from the get-go. So it's a very effective form of trickery and in a way, they're delivering on their promise. The only problem is that to achieve this promise and this full potential, you actually have to go into the settings manually and turn on MPRT, which is turn off by default. It's a setting that uh, basically does this thing where in some other manufacturers they call it pixel overdrive and what it basically does is make the ghosting effect of the IPS panel pixels less. But once again, it doesn't mean input lag. So if you just want faster snappiest experience, you're not going to get this, get it on this monitor because it's IPS and its input lag is still not one millisecond contrary to what you might think because of marketing. If you want one millisecond response time that is like native response time, you need to go and get a TN panel which has the trade offs of looking much, much worse than IPS panels. It's just the pros and cons of each technology. Oh, oh my God, that, that, that whole section about response time and refresh rates, it took about six takes and I, my throat is really hoarse just from talking about it. But hopefully you learned a bit about MPRT, GTG, response times and all that stuff. And you learned a bit about all these refresh rates stuff so that you don't get tricked by different monitor brands with their sneaky marketing. So then how does this monitor actually perform to my eyes? It is pretty impressive and very good. Using a fast shutter speed camera to capture the screen, you can see that the ghosting and smearing the trail behind the main thing, it's very minimal and it's actually very, very clear. I know it looks really funky, but that's as a result of the backlight strobing. This is an effect you can't see at all in real life, so don't worry about how the picture looks. It is just the technology at work here that only other technology can see. It's like robots talking to each other. And from my personal eyes, it's very nice and clear with MPRT uh, on when I'm playing Counter-Strike Global Offensive, you know, you need the fast clear screen, fast FPS and all that stuff. So that is very, very nice. And I love 165 Hertz. It's excellent. It's smoother, more satisfying, and you actually unironically aim better with a higher refresh rate. People who don't believe this, uh, they have no idea what they're talking about. You really do aim better with higher refresh rate. So if you're finding, if you're really bad at a game and you want to get an edge up 165 hertz, high refresh rate monitors, they actually do help. Now, since we're on the topic of response time, all these features delving into settings, let's talk about assessing these features on the monitor. It's all done through the buttons on the bottom of the monitor. This bottom right lip here, that's where you get all the buttons, clicky, clicky. They're pretty clicky, but the problem with these buttons are that they're very poorly labeled. They're on the bottom, so you can actually see them. There isn't any labels on the front that are very clear. They're slight, this, they're etched logos, but they're very hard to see in the dark and stuff. And it's a very difficult menu system to navigate. I, I don't like the button layout. Like right goes up and left goes down for some reason. There is a quick access menu that allows you to quickly switch uh, between different inputs by pressing the most left button. And if you press the second button from the left, you can quickly switch between the manufacturer provided picture profiles, all of which are not color accurate at all with my color meter, spoilers. And if you want to access the more in-depth menu, you press the other two buttons. Don't press the on button by access and you will access the more in-depth menu. But overall, it's just a mess to figure out. And if you're someone who is a tinkerer like me, you're gonna be in for a very annoying time. And if you're someone who's constantly adjusting brightness because you wanna match your ambient brightness uh, with your screen, you wanna match your screen with your ambient brightness, you're constantly delving, digging deep into the menu, you can have a hard time. It's not gonna be fun. But for the average consumer who probably just leave the monitor on standard, plug it in and not turn MPRT on in the settings, which you have to do, it's not gonna be too much of an issue. If you're just gonna be the kind of person to set up the screen once, fire and forget, and not touch the settings much ever, then I don't see it as much of a problem there. But it is really not that enjoyable. You'll be in for a treat. Now in the settings, you will find most of what you need. Color adjustments from RGB and color temperature, input settings, turning free sync on and off. It's all here and it's all reasonably easy to find. And since we're on the topic of free sync, let's talk about it. Did you know free sync monitors are compatible with all GPUs pretty much? Uh, Nvidia kind of disabled it for a while, but with enough people protesting, people power, Nvidia finally re-enabled free sync on Nvidia GPUs. While it might not work as effectively as a G-Sync monitor with a NVIDIA GPU, 
it still works very, very nicely and it still works very, very well. And if you don't know what this FreeSync G-Sync thing does, it's basically good if you have a computer that isn't powerful enough, fast enough to run whatever game you're doing at a consistently high FPS. And what this does is with true FreeSync or G-Sync, it basically allows your monitor to communicate with the GPU and adjust the monitor's frame rate to match the FPS that you are getting so that there isn't tearing. Because when you have a mismatch of FPS and the monitor's refresh rate, the, re the way it refreshes and stuff, it's going to be out of sync. And oftentimes you might have some tearing, like the bottom half is not refreshed while the top half is refreshed, things like that. And basically it looks ugly, it's smearing, it causes dizziness, it's, it's not a fun experience. So FreeSync is on this. Very nice. Turn it on in the settings, leave it on. It's a great time. It adds to the smoothness. It's made for a much more increased, better experience. Okay, so that's like the gaming aspect of things. Let's talk about the other part of its name, the F270i Pro, the big pro word at the end of the model name. It's the F270i Pro. Pro means color work, right? You know, pro, unless, of course, your definition is pro, of pro work is just typing out documents, Microsoft Word, which we know both know isn't what pro is supposed to be. Pro has to mean something related to do with colors because we're talking about screens here. So graphic design, video editing, color grading, photo editing, right, pro work. How does it stand up for that? When I saw the word pro in the name, I was really excited. And that's one of the reasons I actually bought this monitor. And to report my news with my colorimeter that I spent $300 on to do the, the review in depth, not good. Not good news at all. It's it's not it's not a pro monitor, even though it has pro in the name. It re really is. Okay, so using my i1 Display Studio in Display Cal, which is a free open source software for color calibration and color profiles of your monitors, we can see that the delta E is to the black body locus, which tells us the color temperature of the blacks, if I'm not wrong, is pretty bad, which means the black accuracy on this monitor is not great. And mind you, I did all these tests in a room uh, with all the lights off. The monitor was warmed up for more than 30 minutes by this point, and I followed basically the color calibration software's instructions to a T. So my measurements are pretty accurate and I did take them three times. So you can consider them uh, pretty accurate. By the way, the desired result for the, these Delta E's is you want a number that's less than three. If not, you're going to start noticing color shifts in your blacks and your whites of your image. And it is definitely noticeable on, on this screen. Also the measurements for a white point of 6,500 Kelvin, that means they displayed a 6,500 Kelvin white image. I'd actually measured at 6,200 Kelvin, which isn't close to accurate at all, which is not good because if you're doing pro work and you're trying to get color balance right in your video and stuff, not good, not good at all. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So if you were thinking this is a pro display because it has pro in the name, just it isn't just like a MacBook Pro with no external GPU and a two dual core CPU and only four gigs of RAM isn't a pro thing. It really isn't a pro display. It really isn't a display meant for color grading in any way, shape or form. And that's understandable. It's a cheap monitor, but I think Prism could have done much better than put pro in the name here because it then sets a certain expectation that's slightly misleading. And some pros might buy it thinking it's a good monitor to get some work done on the cheap when it really, really isn't. Sure, color calibration, hand compensate for some of its faults, but it just isn't pro monitor. And it sure, it, it fulfills its promise of 120% sRGB coverage, according to my report, which isn't something super impressive. And it does fill up most of the DCI-P3 color gamut, but don't do color grades on this for any sort of paid serious work. Like seriously, get a decent monitor. It's a worthy investment. This really isn't a pro monitor. <laughs> Okay, so and that's where the cost cuts start to become apparent for me. Apart from the plastic build and the lack of I.O. and from, apart from that and the very poor menu system, the colors and contrast aspect of this monitor is where it kind of falls apart. It makes sense. It's a gaming monitor first, a pro content creation monitor second, far, far second. It's way on the bottom of the list. But to put pro in its name means unwanted raised expectations. I don't want a budding creative to get their works color all messed up because they bought this thinking it's a pro monitor. It isn't. And HDR, it really doesn't do HDR well either. Now, many reviewers, websites, journalists, and experts way more than me when it comes to color science and monitor science, they all agree Agree. most of them agree, at least those that aren't paid by monitor companies, that HDR400 is really just a useless form of HDR. Ask Linus Tech Tips, he, he will rent all about it to you. It's just a marketing ploy. This 
is not a HDR display. Don't watch HDR on this. Why? Because even though it's HDR 400 certified, it really isn't bright enough. 400 nits is not enough to show high dynamic range. When we're talking about HDR, it stands for high dynamic range. And dynamic range means the difference in the darks and the difference in the brights in terms of brightness and luminance value is very big. So it feels like it's very immersive and it feels like you can see the actual brightness of the thing in real life on screen. That's what HDR is for. And the basic kind of Dolby HDR standard is a thousand nits, which I think a lot of experts will agree that that's a good kind of starting point. And in fact, Hollywood movies are all freaking, if they're HDR, they're all calibrated at a thousand nits, if not higher. So if you're trying to watch HDR content on this, it's not going to look good. Why? Because all the HDR content, they're mastered on thousand nit displays and they're built for thousand nit or higher displays. So if you're going for HDR content on this, look elsewhere. It really is an HDR. And side note, if you see anything that's HDR 400 ever, don't be fooled into believing that you can have a good time watching HDR on it. It really isn't. And this is not misleading on Prism's part. It does do 400 nits, no problem. So respect to them for that. And it does meet the requirements of HDR 400. My point is that the whole standard of HDR 400 is flawed and not a good thing. It's just a marketing ploy by all the monitor companies. Don't buy into that. Okay, but all this stuff might not actually be the worst things ever. Gaming on this is a real joy with MPRT Overdrive on. It's fast, it's snappy, it's clear. It's a good time, you know, playing CSGO, League of Legends, you name it, it's fun. And with variable refresh rate, great viewing angles and good enough colors uh, that if you're just looking to have fun and game on like Cyberpunk, it's an excellent experience. My problem with this monitor is just that I don't like how the specs, how some of the specs have been marketed, especially things like HDR 400 and the fact that you need to turn on MPRT PRT in the settings manually uh, to basically get the full one milliseconds advertised response time, low ghosting effect with this monitor. If you want to have that low ghosting, low smearing, high clarity gaming experience, you're going to have to dig through the, the monitor settings and turn it on yourself. It's not on by default, but it's re it's kind of like um, it, it's advertised as one millisecond, but it's a feature that I think a lot of people who buy this monitor won't end up using. Why? Simply because it's deep in the settings and most people are average consumers not absolute giga nerds with no friends and no girlfriends like you and me who are watching this video, who are gonna dig through the settings. And I hate how misleading that advertising is because then you're just saying that this monitor can do this, but most people won't actually get that full experience. I think there needs to be more clarity. I think they need to make it more clear that if you want to get this one millisecond, low ghosting experience, low smearing, very high clarity experience, they need to make it more obvious that you should, you have to turn it on manually in the settings yourself. But then there's the whole problem that the settings is a nightmare to navigate, so they better, come up with some guides and put it on their YouTube channel well. I'm not going to do it for them unless they pay me, obviously. But they definitely won't pay me and they definitely won't share my review on the on the Instagram story because I'm not their paid influencer. And also, I'm pretty critical on their monitor. Probably one of their baby high-end monitors. I don't know. <laughs> and of course, I really despise how this monitor is called a pro monitor. Okay, maybe they didn't call it a pro monitor specifically, but it's the F270i Pro. Come on, don't call it a pro. Just call it the F270i X or Plus or SE or Sports Edition or RS3 or GT3 RS or uh, Veyron Super Speed or Benta Yaga Edition or Bougie version or I don't know. You know, just don't call it pro because when you put pro in a name, it means professional for a reason. There's that weight that carries with it. I'm sick of pro non-pro devices calling themselves pro to denote a higher end version. It makes no sense. It's a trend started by Apple and um, like, it just changed the name and I'll be much happier about the fact that the colors aren't the best on this. But anyway, that, that part of the rant, I'm just going to end it there. It's, it's, it's just not pleasant, you know, all these things when it comes to marketing. I'm a reviewer. My whole point is to break down this marketing and hopefully you guys see the value of my channel. And if you do, please like and subscribe. Frankly, for the price, this monitor is very good because it, at the end of the day, it's still IPS. At the end of the day, it still has 178 degrees viewing angles. At the end of the day, it's still 1440p and high refresh rate with free sync. It's still really good and feature packed. So it's a, still a pretty good experience. But the question is, do I recommend it? Like in conclusion, do I recommend it? It depends. Actually, the answer is, is pretty much no. Well, for these few reasons, uh, Prism, for one, is a small brand. So there are concerns that might pop up over its longevity, its warranty, and maybe they might not have enough manpower for support. Now, this is conjecture. I'm not accusing them of anything. I'm just saying that maybe, 
you know, they don't have enough support because they are a small brand. So there isn't as much kind of precedent as to how they are with customers. They have a lot of good reviews on their websites and Lazada and stuff. But the thing about reviews that aren't on random forums like Reddit and stuff, I don't trust them. If there if there are reviews on a on a shopping website or if there are reviews on the on the manufacturer's website themselves, I generally don't find it very trustworthy because it could be very easily doctored. So I avoid listening to those reviews. So I would be slightly wary over the size of Prism as a company. But support local, support a Singapore company. I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm just saying you might want to be careful with that. But the main reason why I won't recommend it is because for the price, you know, for gamers, this mon this screen is really still just a gaming display, not nowhere close to being a pro display. And for gamers who are looking for a good quality, high quality experience with decent colors and high refresh rate, VA panels exist and you don't really need IPS if you just want a good gaming experience and you're not trying to do any pro work. The pool of this monitor and the reason it's like $100 more than the non-IPS monitor, the non-pro version, the F270i, is because it has IPS and it has the promise of better color accuracy and it's the promise that maybe it could do a little bit of color work as well. But from my test, we can clearly tell that it really can't and it really isn't a good idea to use it as a pro display. So because of that, it kind of defeats the purpose of this being an IPS panel. And with VA panels being better and better and being so good nowadays, it's pretty much neck and neck between VA and IPS if you're just talking uh, budget mid-range displays that are meant for gaming. With VA panels being much cheaper and in terms of color quality just for a gaming experience, just gaming experience and viewing angles and contrast, with those panels being so close to IPS on the low end because they're improving so much, I don't see the purpose in buying the F270i Pro. I would buy a cheaper panel, probably from Prism themselves, the non-pro F270i. The VA one, the only difference between this and that is that that is a VA panel. This is an IPS panel. The IPS panel was supposed to have better colors, but because the colors aren't so much better that it's worth the extra hundred plus dollars because it's not going to help you get any pro work done anyway. You just just get the VA version, the non-pro one, you, it will do you fine. And it's still not a TN at the end of the day. So the colors and contrast will still be very comparable with this F270i Pro. So what I'm saying is basically the advantages of this being IPS are not big enough to justify that cost difference. So save that money that you might have to spend by going with the F270i Pro, uh, buy the cheaper non-pro F270i and spend that money on a nice monitor arm with ergonomic adjustments instead, or maybe a color meter, or maybe don't spend that money at all and save up for an actual proper color grading display because if you want a really good color grading experience and you want to deliver professional work, you just got to pay up. Good tools cost money for a reason. Okay, uh, this video has lasted about 37, 38 minutes now. I, I'm not too sure exactly how long it's been, but basically it's been very long and it's not been a great time. And basically, I, by the way, I've been recording audio on this little camera because I haven't got an XLR mic to use my main actual cinema camera yet. So it, I've kind of been mini vlogging the whole thing the whole time. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to end this video off here. It's been a very difficult video to make. It's been a very long journey making this video. I hope you guys found this video helpful and enjoyable though. I, I It was very content rich. It was very in depth. Hopefully, you know, the few giga nerds who watched through the whole thing uh, appreciated it. And if you watched through the whole thing, make sure you comment Gary Dose in the comments and I would give you a little heart because I know you watched the whole video. Uh, but apart from that though, to those people who just watched the last five, six minutes to find out my conclusion and to find out you're also welcome, you know, you're also welcome to just watch as much as you'd like. I'm not going to force you to do anything. I just hope this video was enjoyable for you guys. If you guys liked it and found it enjoyable, just please, please, I beg of you, like it, subscribe. I'm so tired right now. I haven't slept the whole night. <gasps> oh. And follow me on Instagram and join my Discord linked in the description if you want to ask any questions. Also, I host giveaways and the giveaways are almost always going to be on Instagram and Discord. So make sure you uh, follow me there if you want to get, if you want to win a gaming mouse and stuff like that, things like that. Um, I'm going to end a video off here. I have no voice anymore. I need to drink some water. I'll see you guys in the next video. It's coming tomorrow or whatever. This video has been an ordeal. Why do I do this? I don't even get any views. I have a tiny ass channel that will never make it. I'll never be Linus Tech Tips.